Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and in this video I like to show you how to remix an existing Cuddle template to add some custom features. In particular, we'll modify the finger join boxes template to make a small wall-mounted organizer. If you haven't made these kind of boxes before, I would recommend you watch our previous video that's a deep dive into all the different options you can change, and it also includes some tips on gluing and assembly. But in this video, I'll show you how to add a simple label to this box and how to add a shape that extends the back of the box so we can easily put a screw to it and mount it on the wall. The thing when you use other box generators is that you have to download a file for the box and modify it elsewhere. But the nice thing about doing it in Cuddle is that we can do all these operations directly without losing the ability to change the different options in the future. So let's get started. So the first step is going to be to go to cuddle.xyz slash templates. You can also find the link in the top left corner. And here we're going to select the open box with finger joints template. I'm going to click on it so we can start a project. So here we're going to click on edit in Cuddle. And we'll get this prompt that says that this project is owned by someone else. And we need to make a copy to save our changes. So let's click there. There are a couple of things to note now that I made a copy. The first thing is that now I appear as the author of the project. Then there is a note saying that this is a remix of the open box with finger joints project by Toby. And also this is now a private project. That means it's just a copy in my projects folder. In this view, I can make some changes uh, to the project. Like I can change all these different sizes that are available to me, like the width or the depth. Um, but if I want to make further changes, I actually need to go to the editing view. So I'm going to click again to into editing Cuddle. And here you'll note that I also have access to those same parameters or options that I showed you before. If I open this toggle, they will all be there, the width, the depth, the height, and the material thickness. But I can uh, close it. The first thing I want to do is select the dimensions for my box. So I'm going to use those existing parameters. So let's click this toggle box to see them. And I know that my box needs to be about 1.6 inches in every dimension. So I'm going to select that parameter, then type my number, and then the height. I'm going to zoom in here to see. And then uh, something I don't necessarily need are the labels. These are useful for assembly, but I'm going to click on the toggle here to uh, not show the labels. So the first feature I want to add is the label right in front of the box. So I'm going to go on the left-hand side where the components are, and now choose the front panel. And now I'm going to toggle these parameters off so they don't occupy so much space in the inspector. And I want some text. So I'm going to grab a text component. I'm just going to drag it onto the canvas. And I'm going to change a couple of things. So I want to change the alignment, uh, the horizontal alignment, so it's centered, and also the vertical alignment, so it's in the middle. And I know I want to store a little bottle of alcohol. And I want the label to fit there. So I'm simply going to change the size of the text until it fits roughly where I want it. And now I want to change the color of the text to a different color so I can select a different operation on the laser cutter. Uh, I might choose to engrave it or to score it. So I'm going to, while I have the text selected, I'll check the stroke color. And I'm going to choose this purple. So the next thing I want to do is to sort of extend the back panel of the box so I can put an easily accessible hole right there. And in order to modify the back panel, we'll look at the components view and click on the back. And I want to do it in the simplest way possible. So I decided I'm just going to add a triangle on top, on the top edge, so I can place the hole for my screw above the top edge. So to draw a simple triangle, I'm just going to use the pen tool. So I'm going to click here select it and I'm going to place my first point right on the corner and then my second point will be right on the center axis. I'm just going to sort of guess the distance. And then another point on the corner and I want to close this shape and in order to do that I simply click on the first node I created. And when I'm done with that I'm going to hit escape to get out of editing mode. So now let's join these two shapes together. And in order to do that, I need to select them both at the same time. So I'm going to use the window selection, clicking and dragging. Now they're both selected. And I'm going to go to Modify and Boolean Union. So that turns these two shapes into a single one. The next step is I want to place the hole for my screw. So that hole is going to be a circle. 
that I'm going to place on the center and I happen to know that the dimension for that circle is 0 0.16 inches. And I think the placement, as long as it's above this point, above this corner, it's going to work. So I'm going to place it around here. So now I want to grab all the different components of the box, all the shapes in order to make it. So if I go over to the cut layout, you'll see that one downside of what I just did is that these shapes overlap. So I'm going to use the assembly view. And here I can download a file like an SVG to send it to my laser cutter. Uh, also, pro tip for uh, Glowforge users, you can always just select everything and then press Command-C or uh, Control-C on Windows to copy your shapes, then move over to your Glowforge app and then press Command-V or Control-V on Windows to paste them. And once they're finished processing, uh, you can actually rearrange them here as usual to make the best use of material. So I find it really cool that even after making all these changes, we still have access to the original parameters of the template. So I'm going to make them visible by clicking on the toggle again, and I can still change things like the width or the depth um, with a little caveat, because what we did is, is a sort of manual change. There are some things that might break sometimes. So for example, if I change the height, you'll see that the triangle separates, um, but we can fix that. So I'll go to the back view again, and I want to edit this triangle, so I'm going to uh, double click on it and click again to change those anchors. So I'm going to drag the anchors back to the corners of the panel. And I'm going to click out of that by clicking on the canvas. And as you can see, now they're joined again. And of course, I can always change the label of the box. So I'm going to go to the front panel. And if I want to change my label, I can click on the text. Let's say I want something like an acetone uh, container. And without too much trouble, I got back to my custom box with the modifications uh, I had added. So now let me show you what the box looked like once it's cut. I'm always looking for different ways to organize my space. So I really like how this little project turned out. And if you found this video useful, you can help the channel by clicking like and subscribe. And please leave us any questions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.